husband, Pastor Earl Lund. We're yes. so excited to be here tonight and so excited to be able to share how God has touched us, how he's changed us, and uh, we're in the process of being transformed by his love and his presence in our life. And uh, we just want to, you know, want to bless you this evening. We just are believing that God is really going to touch you and by his, by his spirit. Um, this evening we have a really great topic, and we really feel as if we'll encourage people that are out there. We really felt led to be able to share about the topic of comfort. You know, in Matthew we read, come to me, and that's Matthew eleven twenty eight. come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. You know, our God that we have com completely committed our life to is definitely an amazing, the God of comfort. And we have been comforted, and we pray that tonight that you will be comforted by His Spirit working in and through us this evening and touching you exactly where you're at as you watch this program. So do you want to go ahead and open us up in a prayer before we start? Absolutely. Share? Absolutely. So. Heavenly Father, we just thank you and praise you. Jesus, we just thank you and praise you. And Holy Spirit, we just thank you and praise you. And just touch the audience tonight. Just give them revelation. Give them truth. I pray that they have an encounter with you. Not just during the show, but, but tonight in dreams and visions. And just in the next few days as you bring things to their mind and just show them Show them greater revelation of what we're talking about tonight and the areas that they need to just be comforted by you. Amen. And what those areas are they need to surrender to you Amen. and give to you to be transformed into the image of Christ. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So this evening we're going to be talking about, obviously, some scriptures that we're going to be sharing. We have personal testimony that we want to share with. Uh, with you and like I said, we just pray that you're really truly comforted tonight by the power of his Holy Spirit um, I wanted to start off talking about that his name El Rai the God who sees not only does he see you But he cares and I know that personally because I experienced that as I you know have been changed when I came into a relationship with Christ that's exactly how this journey started for me personally as a teenager, as I was a rebellious teenager, um, using drugs, and as a runaway, I was a mess, and I was so lost, and I had a vision sitting in a, in a church, and I saw Jesus' eye come just as a vision in, my, in this diamond that I was wearing on my, on my hand, and when I say that, I saw Jesus' eye look at me, and in his gaze, in his beautiful look, it was unconditional, it was pure love that I saw in his eye. And because of that, I, he didn't ask me to stop using drugs. He didn't ask me to make any changes. I felt so loved and so comforted that I just repented and went the other direction and never used drugs again. And here I am, you know, years later, I am so thankful. I have never had any urge or um, sensation to use drugs in any way. So he is truly the God who sees. And I pray that you really, truly get that revelation you know, as you hear this testimony, because Jesus is the spirit of prophecy, which means he will do it again. So I just pray that you know that he sees you right where you are and that he is so comforting in his love and in his presence. So in John 1, 1, we read that Jesus is the word. And this is how he speaks to us. This is how he, how he fills us by promises that are just full of comfort as we're talking about this tonight. In Psalms 19.7, we read that the law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The statutes of the Lord are trustworthy, making wise the simple. The word is so important that we understand truth. You know, in John 8.32, it says, Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. You know, many times I think in the past, I felt like when I would, you know, I, I, went by, I lived by my feelings. And in the word it says, then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. It wasn't my feelings, and I feel like I know the truth, or I think I might know the truth. No, in the word you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. 
do you want to um, go ahead and share about um, and read John one seventeen? Yes, I'd be happy to, but let me just share something about what you were just talking about. Great. See if I can't maybe help you understand that better. So, the enemy, Satan, he's a liar. All of his demonic angels, the fallen angels, they're all coming, they speak to you, and they lie to you. That's and right. a lot of times we believe those lies, when we don't know the truth, then all of a sudden we're susceptible to all those lies. So a lot of the anxiety, a lot of the depression, a lot of the things that people are going through because they're not really understanding the truth. The truth that in Romans 8, 1, that Jesus truly set us free. There, is, there is no condemnation in Jesus Christ, but yet the liar and deceivers are always coming to give you condemnation. They're always coming to tell you, yeah. you're not good enough. You, there's no hope. You can't get out of this. You're so bad. What you've done is so horrible. There's no way that Jesus can forgive you. There's no way that you can ever you know, earn the love of God. Well, there is truth there. You can't earn the love of God. You can only receive it because He first loved us. Amen. That's why we That's love good. Him. You can't earn His love because you're so good that you're good enough to deserve it. No, his love is unconditional. It's not based on your performance. It's based on what Jesus did yeah. and how Jesus obeyed his Father. So it's understanding the truth of what the law really says because in John, let me just segue into this. So in John 1.17, for the law was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. That's right. So the law came through Moses. The Ten Commandments, you had like 313 laws that were throughout the, the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible written by Moses. You have all of these laws that you're supposed to follow. But you got to understand something. It says if you break one of these laws, then all of it is upon you. So if you break one law, then you're going to go to hell because you're not good enough to go to heaven. Well, she's so beautiful that that right there should qualify her to be able to go to heaven, okay? But the law says no. It's not based on, if it's based on your performance, yes. all of us. That's right. Every one of us. There is no That's one right. walking this earth. There is no one that has ever walked this earth except Jesus Christ that is good enough to be good enough for the law because we've all broken it. So understanding that Jesus, he came, as it says here in Matthew uh, 5, 17. Do not think that I came to destroy the law or the prophets. I did not come to destroy but to fulfill. That's right. See, he didn't come to destroy the law. He came to fulfill it because none of us are going to be good enough. I mean, my wife is so amazing. Still not good enough. Nope. Okay? I mean, I'm not so amazing. She is, but I'm not so amazing. I don't even come close to being good enough. But, you know what? No one is. But here's the interesting part. So, the law came through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. But see, here's, where, here's now where you have to understand the truth, because the truth will set you free. The truth is, that grace and truth is actually higher than the law, not lower than the law. So people are thinking, and they're not understanding the truth, that, oh, okay, so I don't have to follow the law, I just have to follow grace and truth, so that's a lower standard. Not true. The grace and truth is now understanding that you've been bought with the price of His blood. Amen. The law says that that you now are, uh, you're condemned, right? But that, that Jesus now paid for it all. And so all of a sudden, was Jesus paid for it all, that means he was bought with the price, you were bought with the price of his blood. So the law says, don't murder, don't commit adultery. Grace says, Love your neighbor as yourself, right. which means 
love your enemies right. as yourself. So the law would be like, okay, I can love those that love me. Grace says, love those that can't love you. That's a higher standard. You can't even get close to that higher standard without the Holy Spirit filling you, without the blood of Jesus right. covering you, without knowing the Father's love. The Holy Spirit has to fill you for you to be able to fill that. And just like at the law, you know, um, the law says don't commit adultery, and grace says don't lust after someone else. And so uh, it brings me up to something that is really important that as we were getting ready to, uh, for the program and sharing, I really thought of how much comfort I experience knowing that I'm forgiven. That alone gives me tremendous comfort because I really believe that there are so many people that are experiencing so much um, shame or guilt or whatever it may be that in a moment that when you receive Christ as your Lord and Savior, as you, as you repent from that and turn the other direction and give him everything, surrender everything that you are and allow the Holy Spirit to come and fill you and live in you and become that living sacrifice for God. Um, I can't express the amazing comfort I know and I believe because of the truth that I know that I'm forgiven. And, um, you know, what is comfort? You know, I just have a couple notes on here before we um, share further. Um, comfort is a state of being relaxed, feeling no pain, a uh, feeling of freedom from worry or disappointment, emotional strength, um, contentment. And I was, you know, as I'm preparing for this, I just really want to, I just sense, you know, if any of you are feeling any kind of heartbreak or anxiety, um, if you're going through a divorce, if you're experiencing any kind of fear, maybe even trauma, that um, the Lord, you know, Jesus, you know, he is the God of all comfort who comforts us in all trouble. Um, I do want to go ahead and um, read 2 Corinthians, if you want to open up your Bible, um, chapter 1, and that's verses 3 and 5. This is so powerful, and it's so um I pray that it would just minister to you as you hear this, if, if you're um, going to follow along. And it's praise be to, to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of compassion and the God of all comfort. Again, all comfort. Who comforts us in all, again, all, our troubles so that we can comfort those in any trouble with the comfort we ourselves have received from God. So my husband and I have received tremendous comfort by having a relationship with God, being able to have you know, a, a deep relationship with God and being able to call upon him anytime as we have faced many, many challenges, many difficulties that we've been able to get, be so encouraged by, and by just his mere presence. And um, because of that, like it says, so that we can comfort those who are in trouble and, and um, the same comfort that we've received that we can give to you. Freely we've received, now freely we can give to you. Um, I was just reminded so much about, um, you know, years ago my daughter had, uh, was diagnosed as a baby and she had tetralogy of Fallot, which is four different abnormalities and required um, multiple open heart surgeries. And as I was preparing for her surgery, I gave her to God. I literally, like Abraham, I just gave Isaac, I so wanted to dedicate this child to God. And I knew the seriousness of the surgery, but it gave me so much comfort knowing if Abraham could do this with Isaac, then I can certainly, you know, offer this child as I was preparing. Because anything in my life that I grip onto, it will cause me pain. I have to be willing to hold everything, everyone loosely. Even my husband, who I dearly love, I have to hold him loosely. It's better for him that I do. It's better for me that I do. It's better for our marriage that I do. So I can love him in a healthy way and keep God in that God spot, first place in my heart. So when I was preparing for the surgery, I just was so, so it was so intense. And, um, I think it was um, just a couple days after her surgery, she did have cardiac arrest and her heart completely stopped. Praise God, she's okay. She's 21 
um, soon to be 22 years old. But I really had a very, it, that moment when it was code blue and the door is shut to that unit, and I knew there was a child in that unit in terrible distress. I just had comfort from God, like you, I can't even explain. It's supernatural. There was no way I could have explained that other than I knew I would be okay. I knew she would be okay and spared a very painful life if she had to go through lots and lots of uh, work. But I knew I would be okay. Not that I would be happy or, you know, joy, just elated because she passed away. Don't misunderstand. I'm being honest. I just had peace that I would be okay, and he comforted me. What are your thoughts on that, Earl? I know you've experienced lots of opportunities to experience God's comfort, too. Yeah, I think, you know, as you're sharing about that, it's like this is what strikes me of, of knowing my wife. I wasn't there, but knowing that story, just we were there at the hospital that she had that surgery in uh, a few years ago. We went down there and just watched how God moved in a miraculous way that day. But one of my wife's greatest strengths is not trusting in herself, but trusting in God and having faith. So when she's there, it isn't, it isn't that she doesn't understand what can go wrong. It's God, I believe you. I'm going to trust you. I have faith in you that you're a good God. No matter what happens, you're going to have you're going to turn yes. this around and something great is going to come out of this. Yes. That's what I'm going to stand on. That's my foundation. You're a good God. Something great is going to come out of this. That's what I'm going to believe in. That's what I'm going to share with all the doctors, all the nurses, everyone around me. That's what I'm going to speak. That's what I'm going to say. Amen. That's what I'm going to do. And you know what? God comes and comforts her. And there's times where she comforts me and comforts those around her. Uh, but here's the thing. If you haven't allowed God to comfort you, then you really don't have the ability to truly comfort others. You might think you do, but you're going to comfort them with your flesh, not with your spirit, not with where God really wants to use you. So as you have been comforted by God in extreme circumstances or whatever that is in your life, yeah. now you have faith to know that if he comforts you, he can comfort others. So now you can share that faith, that truth, he'll set you free. Amen. And you know what? That's where he's met me with you know, sicknesses that I've had and almost dying a few different times with my first wife passing away, going through a divorce, I mean, just a lot of different things, going through financial stuff, the divorce, where as you go through that, you always have a choice. The choice is, do I trust in what I see and my circumstances, and that's what I'm gonna keep my eyes on, or am I going to trust and have faith in God who is beyond my circumstances, yeah. who is outside of time, who can see something greater. I see something going wrong. God sees how he can take what's here and make something great out of that. And you might not see it for 10 years, 20 years, but when you have faith and hope and that's your focus, you can eventually see that. And when you see it, now you have a great testimony to share with others. And that's what my wife has. She just so believes in the power of testimony. She shares her testimony. She shares her faith. She shows what God has done. And that inspires others. And, you know, if you out there, you're struggling with anxiety. You're struggling with depression. You're struggling with doubt. You know, every one of those is a lie from the enemy. He's got something there. And so, when you are comforted, by God, you're going to typically choose to be comforted by the things of this world. Alcohol, drugs, sex, chocolate, shopping, shopping I mean, on and on and on. And each one of those things by themselves in a small dose might be just fine. Mm -hmm. You might say, well, how can drugs be? No. A drug given by a doctor in the right amount at the right time could be a life-saving thing that could make a big difference. 
But anything taken out of its design and purpose now becomes destructive. And when you now trust in the things of this world instead of the things of God, and look at the things that God has created, whether that's doctors, drugs, whatever that is, as you're focused on the creation that's cre instead of the creator, you lost track of the truth, and now that truth isn't going to set you free. So important. Every single word. I mean, I just couldn't agree with you more on what you're speaking, and I appreciate your encouragement. As you were talking about the God, you know, who sees, he sees you, and I'm reminded of, you know, El Ra'i, you know, the God who sees, you know, circumstances around you when, when in your natural, in your natural eyes, you see all of these circumstances, as I did with my daughter's surgery, and as you did with things that you were experiencing, but El Ra'i, the God who sees, is alive in me, and alive in Earl, so we often will pray, God, give me your eyes, give me your eyes to see, which gives me comfort, which gives me hope, which gives me faith to believe for what I can't see, and trust and surrender in that circumstance. So um, I couldn't agree with you more as far as, you know, the different types of, um, you know, anxiety or whatever that might be, but, you know, practically speaking, you know, it's, it's one thing for me to say, you know, God's show me his comfort but it's another for me to describe you know many times i just sit down with god and i can hand him that burden whatever that was you know whatever it was that i was experiencing you know just like i read earlier you know matthew eleven twenty eight, 28 come to me all you who are weary and burdened and i will give you rest there was one time i had um someone really close to me i found out some devastating news about this person that i loved so much and I remember just having, like, felt like a bucket of fear just fell on me. And it was awful because it's something I don't deal with. A fear is something I do not deal with. And I don't have like that. And I felt it that afternoon. And I was weeping and crying out to God. I sat on my couch. And I said, I can't live like this. I won't be able to love my husband and be, do well at work or anything. I just had so much fear about what was going to happen with this dear, dear loved one. And I remember just handing over all of the fear that I had, all the fear that I had in my heart, all the fear that I felt so strong. I knew it wasn't from God. I knew it wasn't from heaven because he doesn't give us a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and a sound mind. And I sat there, I put some worship music on, and I handed that fear over. I handed it over. And I cannot tell you how within five minutes I felt my hands just come down to my lap. And I just felt completely free of that fear. He lifted all that fear. He paid for it. He paid for all that fear I had on the cross. And in exchange, he gave me just tremendous peace. I never had any more fear for two years. I didn't speak to that person. And now, two years later, I can't even tell you how beautiful and our relationship is reconciled and things have completely changed. But, um, you know, we're going to be closing our program tonight, and we just want to if you don't mind, just um, lead us in prayer as we finish off this evening. I, I want to say something first. I just before I, because I want to speak hope into everyone Amen. out there. Amen. And if you think that it's just going to break like this, and if it doesn't, now you lose hope. That's not truth. Okay. Sometimes you have to battle against things and keep asking for God's strength for days, weeks, months, years. It depends upon what the circumstances. So trusting God, keep that focus and, and turn it into a lifestyle. And it breaks Amen. in different times for different people. Amen. But don't give up. It will keep break. Praying. It will break. It will break. If you just keep pressing in, you don't give in. Keep your focus on God and not the circumstance. So you know what? Out there, just Holy Spirit, just come. Come and just give them the revelation of how they should pray, of what they should do, of how they can surrender that. How Give them the revelation of how Jesus paid for it all on the cross. Yes. Give them the revelation of the Father's love. Just like with Jesus, the Father loved us so much he was willing to sacrifice his son. The Father's ways are not our ways. We see things because of the lies of the enemy and the deception of this world, but help us to see through the Father's eyes. To see through the eyes how Jesus sees things. To become obedient to the Father in His ways. So just move in them. Yes. Just 
speak it. Let them encounter your love, encounter your ways, give them comfort, give them strength, meet them right where they're at, and just keep sending people in their life to keep encouraging them, speaking life into them. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you for joining Joy in Christ on Vision TV. We bless you. We love you. And keep praying. Keep seeking. God bless you.